here's the opening gap reversal in LCID. And my apologies, I was so excited that we had an opening gap reversal to show this friend of mine from Stock Charts who wanted to spend a couple of days trading with me. I forgot to mention it in Facebook. But anyway, it did kind of fake out early on and I had my finger on the trigger and then it sold off. And once it sold off, I felt pretty good. I'm like, okay, this is a good thing because it's really easy to get caught up in those first few minutes of trading. Now these are 15 minute bars. So you do want to give it some wiggle room going in to the trade. And I almost bought in a little bit early and could have easily gotten shaken out. Luckily, it did its little fake aroo. And, and that's the hard part is waiting to see what's going to happen with that fake aroo or if it's going to be a fake aroo. And sometimes they just they just gap lower, they gap to their absolute low, and they go straight back up. Anyway, I ended up buying right here and I had to stop down here. And I forget what I was looking for, point and a half, I think, or so on it. And it just couldn't quite get there. And I also didn't want to look like an idiot and have this turn into a losing trade, especially with somebody literally looking over my shoulder. And so I said, you know what, let's go ahead and just lock and load on this. So at least we got something. And then we'll trail that stop higher for the remainder of the day. And fortunately, it did rally, eventually rally nicely. Now, sometimes these opening gap reversals could be a route. And like I told them, if it makes it up to 47, which was the prior day's close, it'll probably go three or four more points. And it'll be the mother of all beautiful setups. Now, I did exit the remainder of the position on the close. And I did take it across more than one account. But in this particular case, I bought how many shares? 400 shares. And you can see if you add up all the buys and sells for the day, it comes to 826. So it's better than a poke in the eye. So again, you want to be really careful with that opening range and try not to get too caught up in it. Now, here's a daily chart. So this is what happened. Again, it opens, it trades on both sides of the market and then sells off fairly hard. So at that point, you're like, okay, I can put it a stop order. Now, the reason I want to show you a daily chart is you can you can get really caught up in the intraday charts and if you're new to trading opening gap reversals i'd recommend you look at a daily chart and maybe say okay where would this thing be a bona fide possible opening gap reversal put your entry in there use a stop order that's that's how i entered on the other one even though i was itching to pull my pull the trigger figure my trigger finger was itching there's jokes in there i can't i gotta be careful <laughs> <laughs> Might be too soon in some cases. Uh, anyway, it was was uh, I was itching to get in, and then again, not to beat the dead horse, but luckily after a little up fake out, it didn't begin to implode. I was like, dodge a dead bullet. I dodged a bullet. Dodge a dead bullet. I'm I've got Alec Baldwin jokes in my head. I, I apologize, which is not not appropriate. I know. Anyway, so you can see on a daily chart, it might have been a little bit easier to play. And I would encourage you to play the, the daily charts if you're newer to opening gap reversals. Now, the other reason I want to show you the daily chart is it's not the most beautiful setup in the world, but it's a pretty good looking stock. And you can see it took off from 20 all the way almost to 60. So pretty much tripled in value, made a bit of a kind of a double top knockish, knockout lookish pattern, and then sold off from here. So as I'm going to point out in a few minutes, you want to make sure they're set up on the daily chart. And I see opening gaps all the time and things that are wide and loose and sideways and gaps to the downside, burning dogs, as we call them, uh, borrowing a line from Linda Rasky. And that was in Trading Sardines. You don't want to catch that falling knife. You do want to see if you can get that reversal back into the direction of the major trend, especially after a correction. Now, to those of you on the service, and I had a few of you guys thank me on Facebook, and I appreciate that uh, throughout history. Um, a lot of times, if I see a stock, let's say that this was a TKO here. I mean, technically, it's a TKO. But let's say it's a TKO down here, really the mother of all TKOs, and it closes on its butt. What you should watch for, and I point these out in real time, and every now and then, the beauty of it is AMD didn't work out quite so well. The other day, but we'll take a look at that one too, and I'll show you why I pointed out AMD. But I'll point them out when I see them, and then 
the sometimes it's a beautiful thing like okay guys tomorrow we're gonna watch amd this one just popped up on my screen and i checked the screen like five minutes before the open and my apologies for not putting it in facebook but you guys at facebook know that i usually put them in facebook and i don't remember which stock it is i, I tend to forget stocks quickly i seem to remember losses more than longs but i think that's a that's a human nature thing with the dopamine and the psychological impact of a loss versus a gain but it was a winning trade it wasn't a huge trade but it did work out okay and so the last over worked okay by the way i was looking for some slides earlier tonight and i realized oh yeah you won that profit center kick over the summer and on this is one of the profit centers the opening gap reversals but it's not like an income producing machine because these only come along, as I said earlier, once every couple of weeks, and then sometimes it might be once every couple of months. But if you could wait and 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 take only the best, and I should have spent a ticket on that trade. <laughs> Maybe I should get some tickets and do just uh, the uh, ogres i should i should do a stack of ogre trades and see how they go in fact i should do that i'm glad i reminded myself i uh i bought some little carnival tickets or whatever you want to call these things and borrowing kind of a, a charlie munger thing not that i agree with much of what charlie munger says and does but i did like the fact that he talked about if you only had so many tickets to punch you would probably be a little bit more selective in your trend and your trades and in this case, I should probably do like 10 opening gap reversals and then point out that, hey, I'm going to actually spend a ticket on this one and go from there. Anyway, hopefully that makes sense. If not, the now column, which is on the back end of the website, explains that in a lot more details. Now, one thing I really want to talk about is picking the best ogres and, and having, I'll just use it, call, it, call it my name to make life easier, but having Zach with me and teaching him in the process. And I was so blessed to have that he showed up when he showed up. Three weeks ago, I was thinking, man, this guy's just going to quit his job when he sees how much money I'm making trading. And then two weeks ago, I'm thinking he's going to think I am a freaking idiot because I'm going through a drawdown. I had some bad day trades and a lot of other things just aren't working. And then luckily, uh, he came in and a lot of this stuff hit and the, the position started coming back and such. <laughs> I called him a good luck charm. My wife came in this morning, uh, yesterday morning. How's your trading going? I'm like, meh. She's like, you miss your little good luck charm? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, you want to pick the best. And, and, and in teaching him which stocks to pick, it made me realize that I really need to reiterate this to you guys. You want to you wanna go after larger cap, ideally well-known issues. I did do Tesla a while back. Not that I'm a big fan of trading Tesla. I prefer usually to find more inefficient stocks. But sometimes these really well-known issues work best. Like I said a minute ago, I was looking for something in AMD. We'll take a look at that chart in a minute and see what actually happened on a day. And in some ways, it's kind of sort of just the opposite of the core methodology. Now, we do trade some really big cap stocks on occasion in the core methodology, and they can make inefficient moves like CPE, which is Calon Petroleum. I don't know if I'm saying that right or not, but it a, was an oil company a while back, went up 500%. That was a very inefficient move and in what could be seen as a possibly efficient stock because it's such a large cap stock. But in general, we're going after the smaller biotech or some sort of developing technology, maybe crypto now or was at least. But you want something where you have a lot of players. You want something that's likely caught the attention of some institutions. And what happens with the opening gap reversal is the institutions who may have missed the boat might be looking to get in cheaply or at least cheaper because they miss that 300% run up, but they want to get into it. In the case of the LCID, it's electric cards, it's a hot thing. Their clients, start doing a little research or reading, poking around the net or whatever and saying, oh, well, this is an up and coming electric car company. This is the next LCID. Let's have a look at that portfolio to see if I've got any in my portfolio. So the portfolio manager, knowing that the reporting is coming up soon, 
might actually go in and buy that gap while it's cheap. And the traders who maybe work for that institution who forgot to put the orders in recently or whenever, they have to beat the VWAP, that's volume weighted average price, Google it, and they might be rushing in to fill those orders. Now the same might hold true for individual traders. And as I preach, we're trading traders and not markets. So think about what you're going through, think about what they might be going through. They might say, ooh, it's on sale, it's time to buy, or they might have gotten knocked out on the open, freaked out, knocked out, freaked out, and then all of a sudden it starts going right back up, and they decide, oh geez, as we say in Fargo, let's just get right back in. Now, lucky shorts, who were short the stock coming into the day, and they finally got vindicated, they're gonna be looking to get out if the thing doesn't continue to implode, or What's worse for them is if it continues to implode like it did two days ago, the LCID, and then maybe that little pop higher, they might have gotten out, and then all of a sudden it starts to implode, they might have piled on, some new shorts might have piled on. Sometimes you could trade the gap and go, and you got to be really careful with that. And in this case, I don't know if it was shortable or not. I might have tried to just to do a little probe just to see, but sometimes. You could trade a gap and go. Not my favorite thing to do. I'd much rather trade the opening gap reversal. Now, sometimes in the indices, I'll trade a little gap and go type of situation. But anyway, lucky shorts, or shorts in general, or possibly some new shorts rushing in might be looking to cover. And their buying is going to help push it higher and higher. Now, as I said a minute ago, the stock should be set up with strong momentum and recently has hit new highs. So pullbacks, TKOs, things of that nature are usually good things to trade. So do not trade the burning dogs, as I said earlier. So if you got a stock that's going straight down, has a big gap down, don't go in and try to be a hero. I've tried doing that before, it doesn't work, okay? It might work every now and then, but in general, you want to think about the psychology of the market. Do you think there's some institutions out there that might have missed the boat and some big shorts coming in or, or trying to get out, I should say, or both? And I've tried opening gap reversals in thinner issues, and sometimes it doesn't work. It just knocks out who is going to get knocked out, and there's nobody waiting in the wings. But in a Tesla and an AMD, I think one of my best examples ever, it came up when I was searching ogres on my computer was the, what's the name of that stock? Cree made a really good opening gap reversal. Well-known stock. So keep an eye on these, on these semis, which were recently strong. So we could see some setting up there soon.